Hi guys. This is D. Igorotech. Today, I will show you how to configure LAN, VLAN, DHCP and DNS on FortiGate Firewall. In the previous videos, I showed you how to set up the FortiGate Firewall and also how to manage the administrator user accounts. Let's begin. Go to Network. Interfaces. Here, you can see all the device default interfaces configuration. The name. Type. Members. IP Netmask. Administrative access. DHCP clients. DHCP range and the reference. At the top is Fortilink aggregate and it's dedicated for FortiSwitch. However, this can also be configured for different device or different roles. Administrative access is ping and security fabric. Also, by default, you can see the DHCP range configuration. Next is the DMZ or demilitarized zone. DMZ is used to separate untrusted devices from trusted devices. It's commonly used for web servers, email server or DNS servers. Next is the WAN 1 and WAN 2 which are for the WAN or internet facing interface. By default, these WAN interfaces are set to DHCP. We also have the tunnel interface. We can hide interface options by click on the minus sign. Unhide or expand again by click on the plus sign. To view more options, you can click on the table settings or right click on the blank area. Here, you can view more options. Those checked ones are the ones we can currently view on the window. You can tick what you want to show then click apply to save the changes. Now, let's check the LAN interface. Name is internal. Type is VLAN switch. Members are LAN ports 1 to 5. You can see the default gateway which we use to access this device. For the administrative access, we are currently using the HTTPS. Also, the DHCP ranges. This are the default configurations. Let's now change the LAN IP address. Simply double click on it to edit. Alias is optional. Let's assume this network is for admin. Type is VLAN switch. You can enter the VLAN ID or you can leave it to default. We will get back to the VLAN configuration later on. Under interface members, you can see all the interface members. You can click the X sign to remove it if you plan to configure it for different network or if you plan to configure it for WAN or internet facing interface. For FortiGate devices, you can configure any port to be your WAN if you prefer. To add interface, you can choose and click to add from the entries window. Role should be LAN since this is for our internal or LAN network. For the addressing mode, choose manual since we are going to manually assign the IP net mask. Now, Enter your IP net mask. We can use the same subnet but we will change the gateway to 192.168.1.254. We will also use the current subnet which is slash 24. For the gateway, if the subnet is slash 24 then you can use any IP address between 192.168.1.1 to 192.168.1.254. It will automatically create address object matching subnet and the name is internal. For the administrative access. We will enable HTTPS for GUI or web access. HTTP is not recommended for security reason. Ping for troubleshooting purposes. SSH for CLI management access. We are going to enable those options for now. Next is the DHCP server. Tick on it to disable or enable. You can modify the default address range based on your preference. Tick the plus sign to add more address range. You can add more range if you prefer but make sure to exclude the gateway IP from the DHCP address range. For the net mask or subnet. Make sure it matches the subnet from the interface configuration. For the default gateway, if this device is not your LAN default gateway then you can tick specify and enter your preferred default gateway IP address. However, 
If you plan to set this as your gateway then choose same as interface IP which in our case is 192.168.1.254. Now, we go to the DNS server. By default, it's set to same as system DNS. You have the option same as interface IP. We also have the option to specify the IP address. If you are hosting your own DNS then choose this option. Click plus sign to add the IP address then enter your internal DNS IP address. If you don't have internal DNS then we will choose also this option but we will use the public DNS. We can use Google public DNS as our primary DNS. To add more DNS, click on the plus sign. We can add the Cloudflare DNS as our secondary DNS or you can use different public DNS. You can click on the plus sign again if you want to add more DNS. Well, this depends on your preference. The least time indicates how long a device is allowed to use the IP address received from the DHCP pool. By default, it's set to 7 days which is too long if you have a bunch of DHCP clients and most especially if this is for guest Wi-Fi users. You can go to Google and convert it to hours or days. For this demo, we will change it to 8 hours. Simply change to hour then enter the time you prefer. Now, copy the time by seconds. Paste it on the FortiGate least time. To explain this briefly, all DHCP clients or devices will receive IP address from these pools and also receive these DNS servers and it will use it for 8 hours or 28,800 seconds as what we set. If expires, they will automatically receive a new IP address from this DHCP ranges again. In short, DHCP IP address will automatically renew every 8 hours based on what we set. If you click on Advanced, we have some other options like DHCP address reservation and IP and MAC binding. You can check the other video tutorial which I added to this playlist. Next is the device detection. This will detect and identify all devices connected to this interface. This is very useful for troubleshooting and monitoring. You can write any comments if you want and make sure the status is enabled. Click OK to apply the changes. One admin session is currently connected on this interface. This is because we changed the default gateway to different IP. Once we click OK then we will be disconnected and needs to re-log in using the new gateway IP address. You can copy the gateway IP. Now, click OK to apply the changes. We need to log in using the new default gateway IP address. If you change to a different subnet then you should be able to access the gateway as long as you obtain your network IP address automatically or DHCP. It will automatically receive IP address since we enable the DHCP server on the 40 GateLAN interface. Or else you need to manually assign your IP address within the same subnet with your new IP netmask. Login again using your full access admin user. We are now using the newly configured default IP address. Again, go to Network. Interfaces. Let's minimize these other interfaces. Notice the alias admin as we configured. The new default gateway. Administrative access which is ping, HTTPS and SSH. And the two DHCP ranges we configured. Next is we will create a VLAN interface. Click on Create New. Interface. Give it a name. We will give a name of server for this demo. Alias is optional. Type is VLAN. Expand the interface and choose where you want to link this VLAN interface. In my case is the admin or internal. Now, enter the VLAN ID. Role should be LAN. Addressing mode is manual since we are going to manually assign the IP netmask. Enter the IP address you want to assign for this VLAN interface. Again, it will automatically create address object matching subnet with name of server address. For the administrative access, we will enable HTTPS for GUI or web access. Ping for troubleshooting purposes. SSH for CLI management access. Enable DHCP server. You can modify the address range based on your preference. Again, we have to exclude 192.168.100.254 because we used it as our gateway. 
we can set the DHCP range up to .253. Tick the plus sign to add more DHCP range if you want. For the DNS server, choose specify and enter your internal DNS IP address or we can use the Google DNS as our primary. Tick the plus sign to add secondary DNS which we will use the Cloudflare DNS. Well, again, this is all based on your preference. For the DHCP lease time. We can change or lower it again to 8 hours if you prefer. To explain this briefly. This is a VLAN interface named server which has a VLAN ID of 100. The DHCP clients or devices that will be connected to this interface will receive the IP address starting from 192.168.100.200 until 192.168.100.253. They will also receive the Google DNS as primary and Cloudflare DNS as secondary. They will hold the IP address for 8 hours or 28,800 seconds. If expires, it will receive a new IP address from the DHCP range again. Enable device detection for troubleshooting or monitoring purposes. You can write a comment if you want and make sure the status is enabled. Click OK to apply the changes. Since we assigned the VLAN 100 to this admin or internal interface then it should be under this interface. Click on the plus sign to view more interface assigned to this interface. Here, you can see the VLAN 100 details. The name. The type. Interface members are the same as the admin or internal members or ports since we assign to this interface. The IP net mask configured. The administrative access which is ping, HTTPS and SSH. And also the DHCP range. If you want to view more options like the VLAN ID. You can click on the configure table at the top. Scroll down and look for VLAN ID. Tick on it. Click apply to save the changes. Now drag the bar to the right and you will see the VLAN ID column. Here, you can see the VLAN ID which is 100. We can create one more VLAN. We will do the same process so I will do it quickly. We will give a name of guest. Type is VLAN. We will assign it to the same interface with the server or VLAN 100 which is the internal or admin. We will set VLAN 200 for this interface. Role should be LAN. Addressing mode is manual and enter the IP net mask. For the administrative access we will enable HTTPS, ping and also SSH. Enable DHCP server. Enter your desired address range. Well. Since this VLAN is for guests then we can give a bigger range. Of course it depends on the requirements or your preference. And again, we will exclude dot .254 since we already used it for the default gateway. We will use also Google DNS as our primary and Cloudflare DNS as our secondary. For the least time, since this is for guests then I suggest we set it lower since guests usually comes and go or else your DHCP will be full especially if you have a lot of incoming and outgoing guests. Enable device detection for troubleshooting and monitoring purposes. You can leave a comment if you prefer. Make sure the status is enabled then click OK to apply the changes. Click the plus sign again to view the VLANs assigned to this interface. We have now two VLANs which is the server and the guest. You can see the IP net mask. The DHCP ranges and also the VLAN ID which is 200 for guest and 100 for server. In the next video, I will show you how to configure the WAN interfaces. Well, that's all for today's demonstration and I really hope you liked this video. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and click on the notification bell for more amazing tutorials. Thank you and see you in the next video.